Hi everyone, this is Nicole with Titans of CNC Academy, and in this video I'm going to show you how to program the Titan 5M for the Tormac. To start out we need to set up our stock, so to do that I'm going to come up to Setup and down to New Setup. The first thing I want to do is change our orientation to select Z-axis plane and X-axis. I'm going to select this top face as our Z-axis, and since there are no geometry or lines running along X or Y, I'm just going to zoom out. And now I can see my part origin and I can select that for our X axis. I want to change our origin to model box point and then I'm going to select the back left edge of our part. In the stock tab, I want to change our stock offset mode to add stock to all sides. And I'm going to add 0.025 to both X and Y. And I'm going to add 0.23 for our negative Z offset and 0.02 for our positive Z offset. The dimension should read 2 by 2 by 1. And we can click OK. Now that we've set up our stock, we want to go ahead and face our part. So to do that, I'm going to come up to 2D and down to face. And I'm going to select the tool from the building blocks library. We want to use the one and a half inch face mill that we created in the Titan 1M Tormach video. And I'm going to change my spindle speed to 4000 RPM. And our feed rate is going to be 20 inches per minute. In the geometry tab, I don't need to select anything, so I'll just move on to the heights tab. In here, I want to change everything to model top. And in the passes tab, I want to change the pass direction to 180 degrees, the pass extension to 0.76, and our step over is going to be 1.4. I'm going to set the direction to climb and then move on to the linking tab. In here, I want to turn off our lead in and our lead out and click OK. Got our tool coming down. It's going to go across the part. It's going to come back up. It's going to be cutting from the same side since we chose climb. It's going to take its second pass and then it's done. Perfect. Now the next thing we need to do is rough out our part. So to do that, I'm going to come up to 3D and down to Adaptive Clearing. I'm going to select the tool from the library. This time I'm going to use the 3 8 flat end mill. I'm going to change our spindle speed to 4000 RPM. And our cutting feed rate is going to be 20 inches per minute. I don't need to select anything in the geometry tab, so I'm going to move on to our heights tab. In here, we're going to change everything to model top. And our bottom height offset is going to be negative 0.77. In the passes tab, I want to change my optimal load to 0.015. And the minimum cutting radius is going to be 0.015 as well. I'm going to change my maximum roughing step down to 0.8 and I'm going to check the box that says flat area detection. For our stock to leave, I'm going to set it to 5 thou and move on to the linking tab. In here, I'm just going to change my minimum stay down to 0.1. My stay down level, I'm going to change to 70% and the non-engagement feed rate, I'm going to set to 90. For our horizontal lead-in radius, I'm going to set it to 0.15 and same for our vertical. I want to set our ramp type to plunge and then I'll click OK. So you can see it's going to be coming down, walking around the part, it's going to be roughing that profile out, it's going to come up, start on the top.
So the next thing we want to do is finish the outside of our part. So I'm going to go up to 2D and down to 2D contour. I'm going to use the same end mill. I'm going to change our feed rate to 15 inches per minute. In the geometry tab, I want to select the outer profile of our part. In the heights tab, I want to set everything to model top. And I'm going to do a bottom height offset of negative 0.77. In the passes tab, I want to change our compensation type to wear. And I'm going to go ahead and add a finish overlap of 0.01 just to allow it to clean up nicely. In the linking tab, I don't really need to change anything. This all looks good, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So you can see that the tool just comes down, comes around our part, and comes back. Next, we're going to go ahead and finish the star shape. So to do that, I'm going to come up to 2D to contour. And this time we're going to be using a quarter inch end mill. So I'm going to select that from our tool library. We want 4,000 RPM and we're going to do 15 inches per minute for all of our feeds. In the geometry tab, I want to select the bottom contour of the star. And I want to check the box that says stock contours and we're just going to select the outer profile of our part that way it contains it within that boundary. In the heights tab I want to change everything to model top and then our bottom height is going to be from selection and we'll just select this face here below the star. Next in our passes tab I want to change our compensation type to wear and I'm going to check the box that says multiple finishing passes. I'm going to set that number to 1. Our step over for that will be 5 thou. I want to make sure the box that says leads on all finishing passes is checked. And I want to check the box that says roughing passes. In here I want to change our maximum step over to 0.15. And we'll do the number of step overs to 3. In the linking tab, the only thing I want to change in here is our lead-in sweep angle is going to be 45 degrees, and then we can click OK. So you'll remember when we were in the geometry tab, we selected this outer profile of our part as our stock contour, and the reason for that is just to kind of constrain the tool to the areas where it's going to be actually removing material. If we hadn't done that, it would have been a bunch of long, continuous contours around the part, and it would have been wasting a lot more time. Now the next thing I'm going to do is chamfer this part. So I'm going to come up to 2D, down to chamfer, and I'm going to select the tool from the building blocks library. This time we're going to be using the 3 8 chamfer mill. I'm going to be running it at 4000 RPM with a 20 inch per minute feed rate. And I'll just change all of these to 20. For the geometry, I want to select the top contour of our lower chamfer. We'll start with that one. In our heights tab I just want to change everything to model top except our bottom height which is going to be set to selection and I'm just going to select that face below the star. In the passes tab I want to set our compensation type to wear. Our chamfer width is going to be set to zero. Our chamfer tip offset is going to be set to 0.1775 and the clearance I'm going to set 5 thou. In the linking tab, I want to change our lead in sweep angle to 45 degrees. And I'm going to do a linear lead in distance of 0.1 and then click OK. You can see it just comes straight down, straight over, and comes around our part. 
I made sure to leave enough clearance for the tool as it comes down. So the next thing I want to do is chamfer the star on this part. So I'm actually going to duplicate that last tool path. And in the new one, I am going to change in the geometry tab. Our contour selection is now going to be the top contour of the chamfer on the star. And in our heights tab, I want to change our bottom height from model top. And in our passes tab, I'm going to change our chamfer tip offset to 0.05. And I'm going to turn our chamfer clearance to zero. In the linking tab, I'm going to do our horizontal lead-in radius at 0.025. Same with our linear lead-in distance. I'm going to do 0.025 and I'm going to set our vertical lead-in radius to zero. And then click OK. All right, you can see the tool comes down and just comes around the top of our star. That looks good. Got that uh, chamfer tip offset in there so it's not right on the tip of the tool.